Well, good morning and happy Frugal Friday. I am so excited today. Homestead Tessie and I are doing a collaboration on five frugal questions that everyone should be asking themselves. You know, during this time of COVID and food shortages and price gouging, I think being frugal is something that has been foremost on everyone's mind, especially those who have unfortunately lost their jobs, had to take a lower paying job. I mean, there's just been so much challenge for the U.S. as a whole. You all know I live in Ohio, and I'm not sure if it's this way in every state, but we have a yellow, orange, red, purple system county by county. There's 88 counties in Ohio. And the county that I live in has actually gone to the level red, which means uh, you're supposed to only be doing essential things like going to the doctor or the pharmacy or the grocery store. What I can tell you is the numbers keep rising. And if it continues to rise, we are going to be the first county that goes into the purple level. So that is going to impact a lot of businesses. So let's get into the questions. I am going to use talking notes today. That's not something I usually do, but I'm going to try to stick to the script. So here we go. First question, what are the most important frugal things that you do every day to save money? And this was something I had to think about because living frugally has really become a way of life for me. So one of the things that I do is I stay home. And that's not just because of COVID. Of course, it's because of COVID. But I no longer do some of the things that I used to do uh, when I was working and, and had some disposable income. So I don't go to the mall and walk around and shop. I'm not, um, you know, spending money on gas and wear and tear on the car. And homesteading, and I do it on a very small scale, keeps me extremely busy. I'm never bored and I've always been somewhat of a homebody. So staying home has definitely saved me money. The second thing I do, and this may sound a little silly, but I'm telling you guys it works. Sort your mail over the trash. So y'all know I've had several um, spine surgeries. And after my last spine surgery, my employer so graciously sent me a variety of things, you know, to kind of help my recovery. So I now get so many advertisements and sale catalogs of things that I would never spend money on, but are quite interesting and a little bit tempting. So I go straight from the mailbox to the trash can and anything that is an ad goes straight away into the recycle bin uh, or trash can so that I'm not tempted to spend money or peruse all the great sales that they have. The next thing is no waste. So you've seen my videos where I show you how I dehydrate food that is nearing the end of its life. Um, sometimes I can it, generally it gets dehydrated, but I have learned don't waste anything. It's actually painful for me <laughs> to have to throw something away that gets neglected in my refrigerator. So on the daily, I kind of go through a quick glance through my refrigerator and try to plan what do I need to eat up this week. Um, if there is a little bit left in a bottle, I don't throw it away. I put some water in it, I use it. So don't waste and you'll be amazed at how your usage goes down as well as your grocery and household items bill will go down. Turn your TV off. So I do not have cable, but y'all can see over here, I do have a television. I have a smart TV. Um, my TV that was 20 some years old finally blew up one day. So I purchased an inexpensive smart TV and I did so so I could watch YouTube on the television set. And what I've learned is ads are so tempting. Like things that I would never think about needing or wanting. You see this lovely ad and everyone's happy and, and they're so blessed to have this item that they're selling, but we don't need it. So I do watch the ads for 
um, YouTube people that I'm subscribed to, but I don't pay attention to them. But not watching commercials also helps me not to be tempted to make a purchase of something that's an impulse buy or a want versus a need. I also do the same thing with my email. I delete, I do not even open all the lovely email ads that we all get. And I swear they sell our email addresses. They do because if I buy one thing online, I get so many ads, it's extremely frustrating. Then the final thing that I do on the daily is, you've all seen me walking around with this cup and it, it's uh, yeah, kind of not so pretty anymore. I have always um, been a person who drinks a lot of liquids. I seem to always be thirsty. I'm not diabetic. I've been tested so many times. It's just me. I like a lot of liquid. I never leave my house, whether it's a short trip or a long trip, without two things. My handy dandy travel mug, usually full of water or sometimes iced tea and a snack if it's gonna be a long day. So that stops me from stopping at a gas station where a bottle of water is outrageously expensive or going through drive-through because I'm suddenly hangry, hungry and angry. So if you don't currently do that, now this is a metal cup and I don't buy bottled water and I don't like the plastic cups because most of them are not BPA free. So if you're leaving it in the vehicle where it gets hot, those chemicals from the plastic can leach in. So find yourself a good travel mug. You can find them at thrift stores and at the Goodwill. Sanitize it well, use it. This has saved me so much money not stopping to get a beverage. All right, so question number two. What frugal tips do you have for saving on utilities? Well, obviously this morning I'm using my ring light because I've learned that trying to use oil lamps to have enough light for videotaping because I use my iPhone doesn't work out well. But if you look over here, you can see I have natural light coming in. So that is my number one. I try to utilize natural light as much as I can rather than turning on something electrical. I certainly use electricity to cook, um, to run the vacuum cleaner, to do those type things. But just turning off the lights has really helped. And the other thing, if you have any devices that have a remote control, they pull a small amount of electricity if they have a remote control because they have to always be at the ready if you push that button. So unplug anything that has a remote associated with it to decrease that hidden electrical usage. I went through my house when I found out about this. And by the way, the cable box is the number one pull of, um, they call it phantom electricity. And I unplugged everything that had a remote and my electric bill went down like $20 that month. So since then, I simply plug things in when I want to use them if they have a remote. So that is a handy tip to know. You can also go out on your gas and electric supplier website, and they will have a lot of tips about ways to save money and to better insulate your home. So let's talk about insulation. So my home is, about 24 years old. I will be here 20 years in January. I don't have the best insulation. Right now, I can't afford, I have a lot of windows in my house. I can't afford to replace windows, which I know leak air. And I can't really afford to blow in insulation right now. So instead of that, I try to use simple things to perform um, an insulating barrier to have an insulating barrier between the window and the indoors and it works in the summer as well as the winter i do it more in the winter because in the summer you can simply open the windows so even something as simple as bubble wrap or those um, kits where you take a blow dryer and you shrink wrap plastic to the window that makes a big difference sometimes just using um, put a quilt over that window, it will block out a lot of the cold air. So insulate with things that you have on hand 
rather, if you cannot afford it, and I, I certainly can't right now, rather than to do a whole house uh, reinsulation or replacing windows. I'm sure you've all seen the video. Um, Tessie does it as well. That's actually where I really started was from her suggestion of using oil lamps. And I have them all over my home, inside and out. And I simply love the peaceful atmosphere that it creates. And there is nothing better than coming downstairs in the morning, getting a hot cup of coffee, lighting the oil lamps and enjoying the peace and quiet. My next tip is kind of a shout out to my son. Put on or take off clothes. <laughs> So when my son was younger, he would come downstairs literally in gym shorts, no shirt, barefoot in the middle of winter and say, I'm freezing, turn up the heat. And so I would say, put some clothes on, put some clothes on. Well, now that my son is 35 and living on his own, let me tell you, he is like the frugal king and um, has asked for and received for Christmas many things like hoodies and long johns and things like that. So in the winter, it's easy to put on clothes. In the summer, it's a little harder to take off clothes because there is a limit to that. The neighbors will complain if you take off too much clothes. But sometimes just dressing in a breathable fabric, um, dressing in layers so that when you get hot, you can take off clothing. That has been a big help. Another thing to remember, fans, cool people, not rooms. And that was really hard for me to kind of get a handle on. I have ceiling fans. I didn't put all of them up. They were here when I moved in every room, including the kitchen. And so when I used to go away to work every day, I would turn on ceiling fans thinking, well, it would keep the house cool. But it also did was use electricity. So use your fans to cool yourself, not to cool a room, unless you're pulling cool air in from the outside or venting hot air to the outside. Um, monitor your utility contracts. So now that we have a choice in who our electric and gas suppliers are, shop around, look to see who will give you the best deal and understand how long of a time you're committing to and what it would mean should you decide to switch because sometimes the penalties are quite large. Okay, question number three. What are your best frugal tips for saving on groceries and household items. So number one for me, and you've probably seen it in some of my videos, I keep a running list at all times of things that I need. So when it comes time to go to the grocery, I know exactly what I need. Now that we have curbside pickup, or um, even home delivery for some locations, I certainly don't have that. If you find yourself having difficulty sticking to your list, go out online, simply put in your cart what you need, what is on your list, do a curbside pickup, avoid the germs, number one, but also avoid the temptation. So I've done that. What I've found that the downside to that is, is you miss out on in-store specials or it's harder to price compare unless you know by heart which brand is the best buy for what you need. So think about keeping your list up to date. Also shop your ads. Um, I have an Aldi, a new Aldi that is near the Walmart and they have a weekly ad so I get an email and I can see, hey, what's on sale and can I kind of meal plan around that? And I was so thrilled. I did my monthly grocery shopping uh, earlier this week and they had butternut squash at Aldi for 68 cents and I love butternut squash. So kind of a long story, but I ended up having to go to Walmart as well for a few things. And the same butternut squash was 89 cents a pound. So for a big butternut squash for 68 cents at Aldi, it was over $3 because I weighed it because I was curious for the same size butternut squash at Walmart. So it does pay to check those ads. Second thing, dilute products. 
we are so conditioned in the United States anyway that more is better. You need to use things full strength. And I find that that is not true at all. I do make a lot of my own cleaning products and household products, health and beauty type products. However, there are a few things that I choose to purchase. So try it diluted. If it still works the same, dilute it a little bit more. It's just going to make that product last so much longer. A good example of this is, I don't know if you've ever read the back of a shampoo bottle, but it always says, lather, rinse, repeat. We don't need to wash our hair twice. In fact, we probably need to water down the shampoo because it, we don't need to use it full strength. So, of course, the manufacturers want you to use more, 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 more. So try diluting products and also use it up. If you just have this much left, you have this much left. Put a little water in the bottle if it's a bottled product. Uh, turn it upside down. Drain it out. Try not to waste. I have saved so much money simply by diluting products and also making sure that I use it all up before I open a new one. Make it yourself. I often wonder, you know, Walmart has this little system where you can scan your receipt and it keeps track of everything that you've purchased and they will sometimes send you offers for things that you use frequently. Um, they must think I'm a freak because I never buy soap. <laughs> and I buy a lot of um, olive oil and coconut oil for my soaping, but I make soap for a fraction of what a beauty bar would cost. Um, I have things I can gift. I also do have a small business where I sell a lot of the products I make. And I make everything from a lip balm or what I call chapstick, lip scrub, body scrubs, facial masks, facial soap, body soap. Um, I have tried making shampoo and conditioner bars with kind of mixed success, but there are so many things that we can make ourselves. So having things like vinegar and baking soda uh, are great things, chemicals, if you want to call them that, to have on hand to make your own cleaning products. Buy used. So sometimes it's hard because we see all the sparkly new things and they do a lot more than what our current, let's just say, appliance does. But I have found that going to the thrift store or even going to Goodwill, which Goodwill's gotten a little bit pricey, I have purchased so many things there secondhand that have served me well. And once you do acquire a new item, a new household item, take care of that read the manual, know how to use it appropriately, keep it clean, keep it serviced. That will help it to last longer and will stretch your dollar. Question number four. I kind of dread answering this question because I'm not really good at it. What frugal tips do you have for saving on clothes? So when I worked, and I worked full time for 42 years, uh, for many years, I wore a uniform. When I grew in my career and had a management position, then I had to wear dress clothes. So it was important to me to look professional, to look modest, to have a good selection of clothing, especially because I did travel a lot. What I've had to learn over the last year, and it'll be a year November 1 since I retired, is stop buying business dress clothes. I don't need them anymore. I like them, but I really don't need them. So beyond uh, an event or church, I really generally dress very casually. One thing I did want to share with you is I used to have an annual conference that I had to go to. I was a presenter. So, you know, it was very important to me to have new clothes every year for that. Not that I needed them, it was totally a want. At the end of the conference, we had a big gala. Um, so it was a huge, beautiful awards dinner. And then at the end of the dinner, they always had a DJ and dancing. And I, I very much enjoyed that. So I was always on the hunt for that perfect formal dress because it was a formal event. 
and they were so expensive. And once I wore it, then I didn't want to wear it the next year because Lord forbid, you know, they do take pictures and I didn't want them to see me in the same thing, which is totally vain and unnecessary. But I do want to share with you, I finally wised up and I went to Goodwill and I found this beautiful, beautiful dress. And it has this like foofy little thing. If you can tell, it's velvet. It was brand new, still with the tags on. I paid $1.50 for it. <laughs> It was like a red tag or whatever that day's tag was. So it was reduced. It was like 50% off or whatever. And everyone kept asking me, oh, your dress is so pretty. Where'd you get it? And I was like, goodwill for $1.50. But you know, my way of thinking has changed. I really enjoy making the most out of the income that I do have from retirement. So a $1.50 dress, which I did wear twice, by the way. And I have it on hand in case there's another formal event that I need to go to. Um, that has motivated me to look at thrift stores and secondhand stores. We have a little thrift store here in the town I live in. And they have like once a month usually, they will have some sort of event. And it's like everything red is 50 cents or a quarter. Uh, sometimes they will have fill your bag for a dollar. I mean, you just cannot imagine how frugal it is to shop that way. I don't need clothes. I like clothes, but I really don't need clothes. So for me, resisting the temptation to purchase, and I love LuLaRoe, to try to not purchase any LuLaRoe is really the best tip I have. So when I get those emails, I just slide and push delete. You can also clothing swap with friends. So if you have friends that are about the same size as you, I mean, everybody likes to get something new. Um, organize a clothing swap where everything's, you know, a one for one and you can have new items. They can have new items or new to them and kind of satisfy that urge to go shopping. I also advocate for washing, and, and this is kind of a, a country thing, my my family always called things like this, your wearing clothes versus, you know, your towels and sheets. So wash your wearing clothes in cold water, hang it to dry. It really does prolong the life of the things that you have. Now I will say when I'm working outside, I get pretty dirty. So I can't always wash things in cold water because they don't come clean but I still do hang everything to dry. And that does decrease the wear and tear. If you don't already have one, invest in a clothing shaver and you can find them at the dollar store. They're usually battery operated, but you know how you'll get pill up marks, you know, usually from where your arms are rubbing um, or on sweaters where the ball up, you can shave your clothing and it will look brand new and really prolong the life and you still feel fresh and um, like you look good. And that's important, I think, to all of us. Okay, so wrapping up, what is my favorite frugal tip? So it, it might be kind of a long answer, but I'm going to try to make it short. Life skills. That's my favorite frugal tip. Learn how to do things by yourself for yourself so that you're not having to replace items. You're not having to pay someone else to come in and do it. So let me show you my one of my go-to books. This is Home Improvement 123, and I think it's a, yeah, it's a Home Depot book. Now, I did pay a buck ninety-nine for this. All the hardcovers were that at um, Goodwill. But this goes through all the basic things you need to know. Like how, how do you unclog a drain? And having, you know, long hair, having to call a plumber every time I clog a drain, uh, yeah, that would get super pricey. So I've learned to do that. Another good example, I have a gas fireplace. And there's Frankie. Um, and that needs to be serviced on a regular basis. But it's so easy. So consulting a book, I watched some YouTube videos. I now service 
both mine and my mother's gas fireplaces every year. Another example, my refrigerator, which was fairly new at the time, suddenly started leaking and the freezer frosting up. So I tried all the common things, you know, like defrosting in the fridge. My style of refrigerator doesn't have the water pan that you pull out, so that wasn't full. I couldn't figure it out. So I Googled my make of refrigerator and the problem, and lo and behold, there was such a simple solution. It's kind of a design flaw. It's a little rubber valve that's in the back of the refrigerator that gets clogged up over time and causes the freezer to frost up, then defrost and leak all over the floor. Uh, my son did help me pull the refrigerator out and take care of the repair, but I can't imagine, like I was thinking, I'm gonna have to buy a new refrigerator and this thing's practically new. So that has really saved me so much money. Other things, other skills I think that are important to have. You know, I can make soap, I can make my own cleaning products, I can make a lot of health and beauty products. I sew. I haven't done any videos on sewing, but um, I have an idea for one that it's very, very simple and you can do it with a machine or by hand. So stay tuned for that. I think that's going to come up. Cooking, making things homemade. So if you've been watching my channel for a period of time, especially like my almond milk video, you know that making it yourself, you can save so much money and not having to go out to eat or buy prepackaged food. Friday night here has always been pizza night. And I don't know if you've ordered pizza out recently, but the prices are enormous. And so I was like, I bet I can make my own pizza. And it's actually better than what you get from takeout. You don't have to worry about is that particular restaurant practicing sanitary things in lieu of COVID uh, and you have a healthy, good meal that you've made yourself without any additives or preservatives. Crafts, I love making gifts. I love making home decor things. So having that skill like crocheting, I have crocheted so many gifts. One year I made 21, I'll call them wraps, I think it's called actually a virus shawl because the pattern went viral. I made 21 of those in one year as gifts because uh, my son wanted some to give as well to his dad's side of the family. So that saved a tremendous amount of money. I just had my time in the yarn. And then we've already talked about doing your own home repairs. Take care of what you have. Make do. Do without. Use it up wear it out. So that's probably my favorite favorite frugal tip, you know, in a nutshell is self-sufficiency and making do. So I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to watch Tessie's uh, top five frugal questions and tips. And I will post a link below to her channel for those of you who aren't subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, click on that button, you know, the one down there that says subscribe. Click on that and then ring the bell to be notified. Please do the same for Tessie. She is such a lovely lady and she has helped me so much and has become a true and wonderful friend. So subscribe to her as well and tell her Kim from the Wellness Homesteader sent you. Be well, be healthy, be blessed. Have a wonderful day.